Hello and welcome to this month's CCXP Tip of the Month. So for June 2019, we're going to take a look at correlation, which does come up in the CCXP exam. So why do we use correlation? Um, well, the definition is like correlation is basically the strength of uh, the linear relationship between two continuous variables. If that sounds a little complex, don't worry, we'll get into this in a second. Basically, we look for correlations between various types of customer analytics to try and uncover trends and patterns. Now, the past doesn't always guarantee the future, but we can find compelling data from correlations and that can ease decision making. For example, we already know uh, from multiple, multiple um, tests and data points that data continues to show that some of the highest correlations between Google rankings and the number of links to a given page. So whilst we can't prove it, you know, we can't actually say this is definitely what's happening, we can see over time that the more links a page has coming into it, more inbound links, the higher the ranking on Google. So imagine pieces of information like that throughout your business that can provide you with real insight. And although you can't prove the causation, you still can show that that information trends and those trends can be very powerful to use, with, uh, especially with predictive analytics as well. So the key points really are that with correlation, um, you have positive co correlation where two variables trend positively or negatively together. Um, basically, that means height and weight. Uh, taller people are generally tend to be heavier. So on a chart, if you imagine a graph where height's on the x-axis and weight's on the uh, the y, you would expect to see, you know, as one variable goes, the other variable goes up as well. And I'll show you a graphic of that in a minute. Negative correlation means that one variable um, increases as the other one decreases. So for example, um, I would expect heating costs to increase in relationship to the temperature getting colder outside. So the range is from minus one, which would indicate a perfect negative correlation, to plus one, which would indicate a perfect positive correlation. If the value comes back as zero, it means there's absolutely no correlation at all. One thing we always like to stress is that correlation does not prove causation. So look at this graph um, that I, uh, I've given the source at the bottom of the screen here that I found on the internet. There's actually plenty of examples if you go search for it, but basically what this is showing is that there's actually a strong correlation between the number of uh, US fatalities on highways and the number of fresh lemons imported to the USA from Mexico. We know that the fresh lemons being imported doesn't affect the uh, the fatality rate, but nevertheless, they do produce a very strong correlation. So that's why you must always be very cautious about trying to, you know, derive a conclusion that a correlation is actually a causation. So positive correlation, as I mentioned earlier, runs from you know, a very small positive number all the way up to one, which would indicate a perfect positive relationship. Um, these uh, categories on, uh, that are listed here are just uh, just to give you a kind of a guide, but you would expect, you know, if you saw a correlation of say so 0.8, you would, I think it would be reasonable to say that there's a very strong positive relationship. The graphic on the right of the screen here shows when you use a scatter chart, which is the best kind of chart to graph uh, correlations, this will show you what you would expect to see um, with a positive correlation with, the, with, a, with a nice trending line. Likewise, negative correlation, where you can see the line kind of slopes downwards in the other direction, um, this runs from zero all the way to minus one. And again, you know, those kind of like categories give you a feel for, for how the, the strength of the negative relationship. We also sometimes have nonlinear relationships. So if you look at the graph on the right hand side, you can see that there is a relationship between the two variables, quite a strong relationship. But actually, if uh, we put this into a spreadsheet, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, and actually ran a correlation on it, it would come back with zero. So that's why I always mention that the standard way of counting, uh, calculating correlations really only shows linear relationships. For a nonlinear relationship like this, it would actually produce a, you know, a, a not very good result. So that's why I recommend graphing in addition to running correlation because that way you can visually see if there's a relationship as well as actually running the numbers through a correlation algorithm too. So now let's do a quick worked example of how to actually see a correlation and I'll do this using Microsoft Excel. 
Okay, so on the uh, left hand side of the screen here, we can see we've got height and weight for individuals. And what we want to see if there's a correlation between those two. And then I mentioned in my earlier example about negative correlation that, you know, we would expect that as the temperature gets colder outside, the heating costs go up. So we would expect to see a negative correlation. Um, this is the kind of slope that you would expect for a positive, And this is the expect that you would, uh, the slope that you would expect to see for a negative. So it's very easy to calculate it. All you do is you use the coral uh, function in uh, Microsoft Excel. And then what you do is you put in the two ranges. So in this case, we're going to put in the first range for height, press comma, and then the range for weight. And then we'll finish that bracket off and enter. So you can see um, 0.8 with this example of uh, information that I've put in. So this suggests there is a very, very strong relationship between a person's height and a person's weight. Now, likewise, we can run that for the temperature and heating costs as well. So we'll put in our temperature range and then we'll put in our heating costs. And you can see we have an even stronger relationship, but this time it's a negative relationship. So it's almost at minus one, which would be perfect. So those are examples of very, very strong correlations, a strong positive correlation and a strong negative correlation. So let's do a quick sample question just to make sure that you've absorbed this information and you're ready for any kind of correlation questions that come up on the CCXP exam. So you run a correlation on two data sets to test your hypothesis that there is a strong relationship between them. The value returned is 0.65. What does this indicate? Is it that there's no correlation, that there is a weak correlation, that there is a positive correlation, or that there is a strong negative correlation? Feel free to stop the video. I'm going to give a little pause, and then I'll show you guys the answer. And the answer, of course, is that there is a positive correlation. As I said, any number between you know 0.1 and 1 is uh, is indicative of a positive correlation. So I hope that was useful. Um, I've had a few questions on that, and I know that not everybody that works in the CX world comes from an analytical background or a statistical background. So I felt it was important to cover this just so you can guys can kind of see this and how it would look in the real world. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, scatter charts are the way to go when you're actually trying to visually represent um, what a uh, what a correlation looks like. So feel free to contact me, support at ccxpexamsimulator.com. I hope this was useful, and once again, happy studying. I'll see you next time.